This video here is how we put the coon up on a wood board. Uh, somebody asked how we do how we use the stretchers. Here's a blue coon. I showed that in the other video, but early season, not prime. Doesn't go well with the auction. The first video is this coon here. This is the one I just fleshed. I like using these uh, fabric gloves when I flesh. I put the coon up because it they get slippery, and these really help hold the knife. And uh, when you're pulling on the, the pelt, they help with stretching. So you pick the board you want to use. This will be a too small. So we're going to, on that one, we're going to go with, let's see, this is a, that's a female red. We're going to try a, This here is a red fox male. It's a little bit better, so put the coon right on there. This basically is the area I'm going to work in. it down tight you can even bang it on the concrete to get you that get everything set right on the coon I start on the belly side here's your inspection area you want your legs kind of centered and I grab the tabs here we use wood stretchers they're great with the tacks I come about three inches in, depending on the size of the coon, before I put the first tack and I pull down, push in and pull the tack down. And I want to do the same with the tab. Pull it out to the side, push in, and pull the tack down. And I'm going to get to the other side here. Push in, push down. Push down. Tap a little bit wider, takes it out further. That's pretty much it. This is going to be the inspection window when the coon comes off the stretcher. They're going to look at the fur. Now we go to the opposite side. Inches matter, size matters with the coon. Okay. What I do is I just grab the tail and I pull down. Pulling that coon down and I, I go to the V here. I pull out, pull to the side, push in push down. Pull on it. Pull to the side, push in, and pull down. Alright. So now I got my length there. I start working on the sides. Go to the top here. Pull down. And push in. On a mink, we average between 35 and 40 tacks on a mink. 
a can of one here for me. Like I said, sometimes this may be overkill, but we have the time. We're not, we do about 80 miles a day driving. But when we get back, we're back here by noon. We start out between 6 and 7 a.m. Here's a little extra fat on the tail I'm just going to cut off. So we start between 6 and 7 a.m., run the line. We're back here by noon. And with my buddy here, uh, he'll start skinning. He'll hand me the pelt, I'll flesh, hand it back to him, and he'll put it up. Uh, it works out well that way. And there's always a couple. Sometimes we don't do it every day. We'll put things in the freezer. Uh, I work full time, so I'm off during the week, but uh, I basically work three days a week, three 13 hour days, which gives me good trapping time with my buddy. And we get back by noon. We can be done here. I'm home before uh, my wife gets home. So again, I pull down on the tail. I'll take these off because I don't need them for this part. I push in, I'll pull to the side, and push in, and then I push down. About an inch apart, push down. Push in and push to the side. I have been just trapping for 10 years and I met my buddy Dick Atkins. He's been trapping since he's 10, he's 73 now, he has a book out, a video out. He's, my first two years with him I didn't set a trap. I just watched, listened, asked questions. Videos and books and all are, are, are really good. But to have somebody like that that has been doing it and has the experience is just great. There's so many little things you pick up along the way. Some books, some videos are, are there to sell things and you'll really not necessary. I guess for putting up fur, I've been doing this two years. I was always afraid that I would ruin the pelt. And I do do the skinning till I get down to the, the eyes and I let him take over. Some things just have that touch. I don't want big eye holes or big ear holes. I guess I should say until I get down to the ears. And he can zip right through that, do it correctly, and he finishes out the head and the jaws and gives it to me. We take over from there. But um, I was always afraid of ruining the pelts, and I'm just getting into the skinning and putting up now. He's taught me so much. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just amazing to have somebody like that. And that's it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 on the back, 26, 27, 28, 29. So roughly 30, depending on the size of the coon. We like to go with the presentation even because we have that opportunity. We can take the time. Uh, when Dick does the mink, he pleats the tails. He pushes the pin in, comes over, and goes up each side. And the, the mink tails are pleated, and they just look detailed, basically. But that's it. Uh, after they dry, we'll pull the pins. 
and we'll put them on wire stretcher so they keep their shape but uh, the wood is the best to work with to get you that quality detailed look you can really stretch them out and get a good look at them so that's it and when it comes off the inspection window I'll show you one of them Here's a coon, early season, but this is what the graders are going to look at. They're going to go to the window and see what the fur looks like. But they can tell just by looking at the dried hide, the whiter it is, the better it is, the later season it is. So that took me about 10 minutes to do that. If you have a lot of coon, a lot of skins to do, you might not want to put that time into it, but I don't mind. We work well together, I'll show you. Here's the boards. Um, here's some more coon on a red fox board, muskrats. This is another one I did today. Mink. Uh, there's coon here, muskrats up here, but it's good to have different sized boards because that'll give you the edge you want to get the maximum out of your pelt size. I'll go over here, and this, what you probably don't see is the floor, we make a mess when we're doing this, when the season's over, we strip this place down and start over again. Here's so, uh, weights, baskets for traps. These are traps ready to use. These are traps that need to be fixed. In here, this is another shed. You got the uh, mink hanging here. We got 50 mink this season. More mink here. There's a uh, dried hay in those bags for hay sets, weasel boxes up there, fisher boxes up there, there's a beaver here, more traps, more mess. As the season goes on, things get messier. In here there's muskrats to be done, or I'm sorry, coon. Muskrats, these are, these are bobcats from Texas. We take them, put them through a grinder, and make bobcat meat for bait and lure. And over here, I don't know what's in here. Oh, here's more hay for hay sets. Peat moss, drags. Traps, peat moss, more traps, another beaver on there. Here's some beaver caster and oil sacks. Uh, raccoon pelts, muskrat carcasses. Over here, this is the other mess. This is all stuff we've used this far so season or this season that we're putting aside. That'll be done and pick up next season. Here's our for dying the traps. It's a solid block of ice now. A lot of propane. That's uh, here's where we dip them. Our wax buckets. That's the trailer we take. We've taken that to. Uh, Maine, Iowa, and Texas. That's what we put the supplies in. And this is our mess. So we'll finish up. This will sit for a couple months and, and then we'll uh, get ready again.
I just happened to find these at a hardware store for $1.99. And they're great for traps. They're sturdy, they stack and lock into place. When I found them, it was probably seven degrees out. At the, I took one, I threw it up in the air and let it drop. Didn't crack. These here crack. So when they didn't crack and they're very sturdy, they work well. If you don't leave them or have vents in the bottom of some type, when we leave this stuff all out, they ice up. So that's it.